I took my family out to Bacchus Marsh for a strawberry picking session over the weekend. And since I was in the driver's seat, they had no choice but to accompany me to the local nursery. We ended up by plant inspiration, which is at Darley. And while I was there, I picked up a few sedums. These ones here are Cape Blancos. I already have some in my garden, but I needed more. So I got a few plugs. These are labeled as Sidum Voodoo. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's just a marketing name or if that's a proper cultivar name. So I'll be doing a bit of researching. I originally thought this was a Spurium, which is more commonly known as Dragon's Blood, but they look larger than Dragon's Blood. I also got these ones. I'm not sure what they are. They are a bit furry, but I don't know. I think they would make good accents or maybe best use as trailing plants along the rocks. I only got four tubes of these because I'm not sure how I would be growing them yet. In case anyone was wondering about the nursery, it's called Plant Inspiration and you can find them along Darley. This, they have a 40% discount running at the moment, I'm not sure until when, but you might want to check it out. So this is where we left off from the last session. And as you can see, there are three plants here. This is an Echeveria Golden Glow, Echeveria Thelma, and an Echeveria Alice. Of the three, I'm not really sure about the Golden Glow because while it do stands out, I, I originally picked it for its color. As you can see, it's bright lime green. So. It's definitely standing out from the rest of them but the thing is there's a theme of frillies in this area so I think this is out of place I might have to think about a replacement I'm thinking of replacing it with this Dick's Pink because it's really large right now and it's starting to overwhelm the area then I remembered that I bought this Echeveria Sun Dancer during the Boxing Day sales in Ascotville. Maybe I should use this one. And just like that, we've confirmed the selection of the centerpieces. The Sun Dancer isn't impressive at the moment, but given enough time, it will grow large. So I'll have to make sure to give it enough space around it. And for the next bit, I'm going to plant these ajaveras in the ground. Before I begin planting though, we have to take note of the fillers that I am planning to use. And one of the fillers that I intend to use are these jelly beans. It's not immediately obvious in this view, but as you can see, this is an imbricata. And as you know, imbricatas can grow quite large. And right next to it are the jelly beans, and they are at the same heights right now. Bearing that in mind, I might have to account for that, for the height, and I might have to set my echeverias even higher. That way the jelly beans do not overwhelm them, they would appear lower compared to the echeveria. You will be noticing the same thing when you start looking at the Senecio serpents or the dwarf blue chalk sticks. Though maybe not as tall as the jelly beans, they still do grow some height so we have to keep that in mind the reason I bring it up now is because I learned this lesson when I did it with my Sidum Gold Mound and Black Prince so as you can see the Black Princes are being overwhelmed the Sidums are growing taller than the Black Prince so I should have mounted the Black Prince so they would still appear above the Sidums so going with that view, I have to make sure that I mound the Echeveras higher or I could dig deeper trenches for the Sidums. Either way, I have those options at my disposal.
went ahead and gathered more Echeveria elegance off camera. You've seen me do this many times before so I felt that I didn't need to show it anymore. It's time to think about the fillers. The freelies I've put in are all showing warm colors and this will only get more intense as they mature and as they get even more stressed. And you know I like my plants stressed. Since they have warm colors, I would need something that would contrast well against them. And you know what would contrast against warm colors? Of course, the cool colors. I was thinking I could use the elegance to fill up the inner layer. And besides, I can grow enough of them re relatively quick. I would just need a few weeks or maybe a month and the smaller ones would grow. For now, I harvested some of the decent sized ones. I still see more pops on the stems, but I'll get them when they're ready. Since these ones are tiny cuttings and not all of them have roots, I'm thinking of backfilling some areas with this soil mix. This mix should be more fine and water retaining compared to my regular mix. And this is what the elegance would, would need right now. So adding a thin layer on top would be a good idea right now. layer in and that's the Echeveria elegance. As you may know these rosettes are low-lying and this detail is particularly important because as you know Echeverias need airflow. So by having low-lying plants around the larger Echeverias there would still be some airflow. The blue chalk sticks at the back are starting to overwhelm some of my Echeverias so I think it's about time that I trim them as well. Just from the clump at the back, I managed to harvest about 25 heads. And the thing about blue chopsticks is that they are like hydras. Cut off one head and many more will grow. So you have to stay on top of it. Otherwise they will just take over your garden.
I think this should give you a good idea of the difference in size. To the left, you'll see the Senecio Mandraliskai. This is the regular blue chalk sticks. And to the right, these are the Senecio Serpents, also known as a dwarf blue chalk sticks. It's clear just from the leaves and the stalk alone, you could clearly see the differences. I prefer using the dwarf in smaller tapestries, while the, the larger blue chalk sticks I usually have them at the back since they grow tall and they fill up an area nicely. So they make good edging and they make good fillers as well. So having two varieties, I just have to make sure I use the correct one in the correct spot. For the next part, I'm thinking of surrounding the bowls with something green. The rosettes that you see here would usually go red, brown or orange. So something cool in color would offset nicely. And for that, I have a huge clump of jelly beans here, the green type. And I should be able, and I think I should be able to harvest enough heads to fill up the gaps. are in I'm thinking of dividing up this area and for that I'm going to use some of my blue chalk sticks the dwarf ones so I'm going, I'm going to create a, a barrier here separating the two areas and filling up each area would be a different type of plant so the upper side would be the sedum aurora which are the the pale version of the jelly beans well filling up the gaps in the bottom would be one of my other sedums I still have to decide which one that is, but it's definitely going to be one of the lighter ones. And speaking of light, I have a few plugs of Cape Blanco here. This is also known as Silver Blob in Australia. I might be able to use this to fill up the space around the elegans. Because color-wise, they are closest to the pale elegans. So I need to soften the transition. Thank you. 
Now that I've got the strong blue lining care of the dwarf blue chalk sticks, I can now work on the other parts. So I'm thinking that this area should be bright and pastel-y. Maybe I could play around with some of the lighter and brighter fillers that I have. As mentioned earlier, I have, uh, I have several plugs of Cape Blanco. I might be able to use them there. And to contrast against the jelly beans, I also have two plugs of Sidum Aurora. These are the lighter jelly beans. I should also have a few clumps here somewhere in case I needed more. Another set that I think I could play around with are these Sedeveria Hameli. I like how tight their clumps are. And for a dash of lime, I could also, of course, use this gold mound because their appearance is very striking. This is what I have so far. I still have to think about some of the spaces at the back. Because for now, they are still pretty bare and I haven't really decided what I want to use there yet. As far as material goes, I still have these plugs of Sidum Voodoo. This plant called Voodoo is similar if not equal to the plant that's known as Dragon's Blood in Australia. They are the same species. 
this one looks a bit bigger but yeah but I have a feeling that they're the same plant in which case this is good because I have clumps growing in another part of the garden so if in so if in case I run out of material for for the arc I could always pull from my stash a lot of building has happened today and I'm still not done and it's been a long day that I think I've exhausted my creative juices for today if you like this video please hit like and subscribe to my channel to get more videos like these you could also check out my socials that series capades at Facebook Instagram and Twitter the next episode will be continuing where I'm leaving off now and that is continuing filling up the arc I am mostly done with the front except for a few parts but I haven't really worked much on the back so this is something that I would have to think about while I recharge I'll see you in the next episode